Our next guest coming up, Rabbi Shapiro. Are you related at all to Ben Shapiro? Uh, I, I am not, and if I was, yeah. I would not admit it. <laughs> so when your typical Jew sees such a huge gathering of 15,000 Jews, and so would Ben Shapiro fit under that category? If you ask them that the Jews and Muslims lived in peace for for uh, over a thousand years. Okay, so, you, so you're so you a specialist in uh, Jewish Sharia law. It's not Islam and it's not, Mus it's not Muslims against Jews. That's the main thing we have to tell people. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. Welcome to the Deen Show. I'm Eddie, your host. How are you guys doing? Good to have you back with us every week here on the Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you can get all the latest episodes sent directly to you. Go ahead and subscribe right now. Hit that notification bell. Help us get our numbers back up. Did you know that many years ago, the Dean Show, when we started 2006, we used to broadcast for many years on the Khalifa Clothing Channel, currently known as Digital Minbar. So we're trying to get our numbers back up because the channel at that time got closed. Then we started the official Dean Show channel. We're trying to get our numbers back up to where they should be. And that's this number here, 855, combined with what we currently have, 442. We should be over a million two hundred thousand subscribers. Help us to get our numbers back to where they should be. With that small setback that we had many years ago, you guys can help us by subscribing right now and hitting that notification bell. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Salam alaikum. And don't forget to support us on our Patreon page. Our next guest coming up, Rabbi Shapiro. His congregation is in Queens, New York. He is a specialist in Jewish history and Jewish sh law, Sharia law. And he's an author of several books. My next guest, special guest, Rabbi, how are you? Shapiro. I'm great. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you for uh, being with us. When I was inter introducing you, I said in uh, Jewish Sharia law. Is that correct? That's well, absolutely true. In fact, one of our great sages, Rabbi Sajir Gon, who was uh, Egyptian, he lived in Fayum. He used, he used to write in Arabic his Jewish works, philosophical works. And for the word that's translated Torah or teachings, he uses the word Sharia, plural. Okay, so, you, so you're a specialist in uh, Jewish Sharia law and a historian, academic, and you're here with us on the Dean Show. I am. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I want to get into this next clip. We're about to begin a historic event. Now, this is you. Is this correct? That's this me. That is me. I recognize that you see my voice. not be an educational lesson, lectures given by experts in Judaism about Judaism, in particular, the incompatibility between Judaism and Zionism. Many Jews believe, wrongly, that Zionism is either part of Judaism or is compatible with Judaism or is even the main part of Judaism. All of those are actually false. Zionism was created to negate Judaism. Zionism was created to replace Judaism. The differences between Zionism and Judaism are vast. They're vast and profound. The propaganda that the Zionists have churned out for the past hundred years have confused and conflated Zionism and Judaism such that when the average person walks down the street, he thinks that the state of Israel is the Jewish state, he thinks that Zionism is Judaism, and he doesn't know the difference. This group of Jews here are students of the students of the late Satmar Rabbi, Rabbi Yoel Teitelbaum, who was the greatest disseminator of the clarity regarding the difference between Judaism and Zionism. So tell us about this uh, gathering here. You 15,000. These are like students of students of, you mentioned uh, the, 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 the scholar there, the rabbi. Uh, there are students there, scholars there. Tell us a little bit about this event that you were at. Sure. There were, there were two such events, actually. This one was in Nassau Coliseum. A parallel one that, taking, that took place at a different time was in the Barclay Center in Brooklyn. Basically, there were protests against Israel's well, the one in Barclay was a protest against Israel's attempt to draft the Orthodox Jews, the yeshiva students, into their army. And the one in Nassau Coliseum was just a general educational event to uh, teach the students there, the congregation, the Jews, that they need to learn the difference between Judaism and Zionism in depth and regularly. Let me ask you this question, Rabbi Shapiro. 
Is anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism synonymous? No, that's, uh, may I say, it's stupid. That's exactly what it is. It's absolute nonsense. It, it's very simple. First of all, Zionism is not Judaism. And even if Zionism was Judaism, if somebody doesn't like my religion, it doesn't make him an anti-Semite. There are plenty of religions that I don't like. There are probably certain religions that you don't like. If I don't like somebody's religion, that doesn't make me a hater. If I don't like somebody's uh, essential characteristics, something he's born with, if I judge somebody by his, the color of his skin or his nationality or the way that he, some, something that he's born with, then that's hate. But if I judge somebody by his lifestyle choices, including his religion, there are all sorts of satanic religions and stuff, that does, that's not hate speech, that's an opinion. Uh, just any ideology is, is um, subject to opposition. And Zionism is just an ideology, even if it would be part of Judaism, which it's not. Now, um, Zionism not only is not part of Judaism, but it's actually, it contravenes Judaism. You see, uh, Zionism was invented in the 19th century, and it was designed to change the definition of what a Jew is. The, the formula that the Zionists give, which actually capsul uh, capsulizes Zionism very well, and it also is used by them to explain why anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, the former prime minister of Israel, thank God he's former, uh, uses this in his book uh, called uh, Among the Family of Nations. Uh, he says that saying I'm anti-Zionist but I'm not anti-Jew is saying is the same as saying I'm anti America, the existence of America, but I'm not against the American nationality. In other words, as Avigdor Lieberman puts it on Israel's website and MFA, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Japan is to the Japanese, what France is to the French, what Israel is to the Jews. Now, mind you, uh, the real formulation is that Japan is to the Japanese, what France is to the French, what Israel is to the Israelis. There's only one country in the world, and that's Israel. One country in the world that claims to be the nation state of people that are not its citizens, that never were its citizens, don't plan on being its citizens. It means two things. If Israel would be the country of the Israelis, that means whether you're Jewish or not, Israel's your country. Uh, but because Israel claims that it's the state of the Jews, not the Israelis, you could be an Israeli citizen, but there's a nation state law that says that national self-determination rights only apply to the Jews. That means A, if you are an Israeli citizen, but you're not Jewish, Israel is not your nation state. Two, it means that if you are a Jew, such as myself, who does not live in Israel, I'm not an Israeli citizen, my father's family is from Poland, on my mother's side, they're from England and Russia. This means that Israel claims, because I'm born Jewish, that Israel is my state. And that's absolutely not true. I have nothing to do with some country in the Middle East. What Zionism did is change the definition of Jew, or in their mind, from a religion to a nationality. It's very simple. The definition of Jew, according to Judaism, and according to the way Jews have identified all throughout history, is quite simple. There's a story of the Jewish people in the Bible. God gave the Torah to the Jews on Mount Sinai. Very simple. God gave Moses the law, and he gave it to the Jews. That's it. Now, if you change God, we are a monotheistic religion. Uh, if you change God like the old pagans did, you're changing the religion of Judaism to another religion, if you don't believe in our God. If you don't believe in our law, you add a New Testament, for example, like the Christians did. You changed our religion. The Zionists changed the third part of that equation, the Jewish people. God gave the law to the Jews. The pagans changed what God is. The Christians changed what the law is. And the Zionists changed what the Jews are. The Jews, they said, are not somebody that was created on Mount, si Mount Sinai that was enjoined by God, deputized into the religion to follow the Torah. That's what a Jew is. If the law says you are obligated to follow the Torah, that makes you Jewish. If not, not. Your father's mm -hmm. Jewish and your mother's not Jewish. You're not Jewish. That's, that's religious doctrine. The Zionists said, no, no, we don't like that. We don't want that. That makes trouble. People don't like Jews because of the religion. We're going to become Jews, but not religious-wise. We're going to become a nationality. See, in the 19th century, nationalism helped a lot of people, the Balkan states and so on. And they said, we're going to 
transform our Jewish identity from a religion to a nationality. So here's what they did. They said, first, we have to give the Jewish people national characteristics. The Jews had no national characteristics. We did not have a common land. Israel is a holy land. Very important to know. Israel is to the Jews a holy land, not a national homeland. A homeland means the place where the nation was born. And indeed, in Israel's language, in modern Hebrew, homeland is called moledet, which means the place you're born. Um, in Israel's Declaration of Independence, it says the Jewish people were born here. That's false. According to Judaism, the Jewish people were born at Mount Sinai. According to Zionism, the Jewish people were born when Joshua led the Jews into Israel, if they actually believe that, which they don't, but at least in them, uh, what they claim is mythology, that's when Judaism started. They claim the Jews were born in that land. They changed the concept of a holy land to a national homeland. Difference is that if it's a homeland, it doesn't matter who has sovereignty over it. Jerusalem and the Holy Land is just as holy when the Turks owned it or the Ottomans, when the British owned it, when the Romans owned it. In fact, today, part of Lebanon, southern Lebanon, is the Holy Land. It's considered the, the land of our forefathers. And Eilat, which is part of Israel, is not part of the Holy Land. So if you're living in Eilat, you're, not, you're considered as, as if you're not living in the Holy Land. It's the same as you'd be living in Paris. But in southern Lebanon, somewhere um, south of Beirut, I'm not exactly sure wh wh what, what town would be there, but somewhere uh, southern Lebanon, that's considered the Holy Land. They changed it to a national homeland Sons, for some reason that the Jews therefore need to have sovereignty over it, which is false. Not only do the Jews not ha don't care about sovereignty over it, it's holy no matter what, um, the Jews are not allowed to have sovereignty over it before the Messiah comes, but that's really beside the point. They gave the Jews a national language, Hebrew. Jews haven't spoken Hebrew for thousands of years, literally. Even in the days when the destruction of the temple 2,000 years ago, when we lived in uh, the Holy Land with the yeah. temple, uh, we spoke Aramaic. I don't mean to interrupt you. When I was watching uh, your lecture, Has Zionism Hijacked Judaism? That was one of my questions I was going to ask you. You, you, you talk about this in that lecture, that the language of the Jews was Aramaic. In biblical times, the Jews spoke Hebrew. In biblical uh -huh. times, Abraham, Moses, yeah. Yeah. they I spoke see. Hebrew. However, that's not what made us into a people. That wasn't our national language, the way English makes uh, Englishmen into English. There was a professor that had a very interesting uh, uh, um, observation. Every language... Uh, reflects the name of the people that speak it. China, Chinese. Uh, England, English. America, also English. Mexico, Spain, Spanish, etc. But in Hebrew, in Judaism, Hebrew is not called Jewish. It's called Lashen HaKodesh, which mm -hmm. means the holy language, because it wasn't, it wasn't a national language. Could be we spoke it once, we did in biblical times, but that's not what made us into a people. During the times of the second uh, uh, temple, we spoke Aramaic. OK, uh, and but the Zionists said we need to give the Jews a language. So we're going to create a modern Hebrew language. And they actually created a language. A biblical Hebrew, which is the only Hebrew that we spoke, has uh, a few hundreds. Uh, it's in the hundreds, the amount of root words it has. Modern Hebrew has like thousands and thousands. It's mostly invented, taken from other languages. Uh, but they said Jews have to speak Hebrew, and this was way before they created a state. Jews need a, a, he, uh, a language. They created a flag for the Jews. The Jews never had a flag because we're not a nationality. Uh, the Kurds have a flag even though they don't have a country. We, we didn't care what language we spoke. Jews in Spain spoke Spanish or Ladino. Uh, Jews, some Jews spoke Yiddish. The Jews in, in Syria I spoke Arabic. I have Syrian Jewish Orthodox friends. They refer to God as Allah. And they still use uh, Arabic uh, phrases. I learned from them. If Jews yeah, yeah, lived yeah. in China, he spoke Chinese. That's all. It, it, uh, mm -hmm. it didn't, you know what the language of the Jews is? Is the Holy Torah. It's our studies. The content, not the style in which you say it. If you speak positive about God, about the religion, about the Torah, if you study the Torah, you ask a question about it, you give a new insight to it, that's the language of the Jews. Uh, uh, the Zionists hated that. Uh -huh.
So, okay. so they made us, they made the Jews into, they claim the Jews are a nationality and that Israel is a country that, and Zion is based on two claims. Claim number mm -hmm. one, the Jews are a nationality, a uh, political people, which the first person, which was invented mostly by Heinrich Gretz. Two, that Israel is the country of, the, of that people. Both mm -hmm. of those are false. Okay, I want to get a bunch of questions in here um, since we have you, Rabbi Shapiro. Are you related at all to Ben Shapiro? Uh, I, I am not, and if I you, was, you, I would not admit it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, what, how, Jews who are Orthodox, such as him, who are also Zionists, we consider Zionism, the idea that Jews are a nationality, a form of idol worship. Wait, say that again? Consider Zionism, which is the ideology that says Jews are a nation, yeah. Yeah. as idol worship. Wow. wow. It's the same as if you change God, you change the Jewish people. It's idol worship. Yeah. Yeah. Now, somebody who's a Zionist, who's also an Orthodox Jew, is no different than the Orthodox Jews in biblical times who Just worshiped right. the Baal, who were religious Jews that also worshiped idols. Yeah. They yeah. are religious idol worshipers. So would Ben Shapiro fit under that category? Oh, yes. If, if he's a Zionist, you know, I mean, I'd have to ask him because we, we have a rule that we judge people favorably unless we mm -hmm. prove them guilty. But if yeah, he yeah. admits that he believes the Jews are a nationality, he believes in Zionism, then yes, he certainly would absolutely be an idol worshiper. If he believes that the state of Israel is the state of the Jews, the nation of the Jews, yes, that's idol worship. No question about it. What are some of his main views that you've seen publicly that he talks about, that he expresses? And have you ever watched him? And then how would a conversation between you and him go? Um, I have not watched him. Yeah. I, wa I have a clip of him once, um, which I play often. You know that, that, that item that I just quoted from Benjamin Netanyahu in his book, that the reason why anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism is because um, you can't say that you don't want Israel to exist and still you want the Jews to exist. Uh -huh. It's like saying America... So Ben Shapiro said the exact same thing. I'm not saying he plagiarized it from Netanyahu, uh -huh. but I'm not saying he didn't. And I use that as an example. Country him, and that still him and Netanyahu uh, both said the same thing. I guess, by the way, it means the Benjamins are a problem, those two. Uh -huh. And um, they it's both Zionism and it's both absolutely against Judaism. What do we have here? I have a, a little clip from, from Ben. See, what, what, let's see what he has to say. We live in a country that still values dissent and protest. That's much more than we can say right now for the apartheid state of Israel. Whoa, not sure where that came from. And um, that's a lie. But I think we'll save that lie for another time since we actually have other topics to get to. Suffice to say that Muslims in Israel have more rights than Muslims any place in the Middle East by a long shot. Uh, we, we often hear this. You often hear this. Uh, what, what do you say to something like that? Okay, so first I have to tell you my policy on the Jews' relationship to the Israel-Palestinian conflict, mm -hmm. okay? And far be it from me to tell the Palestinians how to fight their fight. Not my job. However, if they would ask me advice, this is what I would tell them. The, the issue between Israel and the Palestinians is not merely an issue of behavior. Ben Shapiro, and that was Ariel Gold, I believe, um, are talking about Israel's behavior. Behavior is a result of and is driven by an ideology. The ideology that justifies Israel's actions is that Israel is the state of the Jews. That's Zionism. And just as you, 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 you can't fight an enemy without fighting the ideology that drives them. You, you can't fight Stalin. You need to fight communism also. And you know how whenever there's a war, you drop these flyers over enemy, enemy territory to tell them that their ideology is wrong. Zionist ideology is what needs to be broken. And that ideology says that Jews all over the... Israel is the country of the Jews, not the country of the Israelis. That's the formula. Israel needs to be changed to, the, to become the country of its citizens not the country of the Jews, and it's not. And therefore, to me, Israel is like China. It is no different than China. The Jews in Israel are like Jews living in China. And therefore, when people ask me all the time, when I spoke at that protest in Nassau County that you played, 
whenever the press speaks to me, and, and they only really care about one thing, they don't care about Jewish ideology, uh, anything I just told you, they care about one thing. What do you think about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? And I ask them, why don't you ask me about the conflict between uh, China and the Uyghur Muslims? or between India and Kashmir. You're asking me because I'm a Jew, and because I'm a Jew, you think I have a connection with Israel. Well, I have news for you. I have nothing to do with Israel. Israel's politics has as much to do with me as China's politics and as Korea's politics and as all of this. See, it's a trap. I, I believe it's a trap. This is my view. Jews that jump into the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, even on the side of the Palestinians, but do so because they're Jews. And they're not involved in other human rights questions all over the world. But because they're Jews, they feel they have to weigh in in Israel. If you accept that, if anybody accepts that, you're accepting Zionism. Because what you're saying is, you're a Jew, Israel's your country, what do you as a Jew have to say about what your country's doing? My answer to that is Israel is not my country. Ask me about China. Listen, human rights issues concern me all over the world. But as a Jew, I am no more connected to Israel's behavior than I am connected to China's behavior. And I'm no more connected to the, I'm not Israeli. I'm not Palestinian. I'm not Chinese. And I'm not a Uyghur Muslim. I'm a Jew and an American of Polish descent. I have nothing to do with Israel. And if everybody would get that attitude, then guess what? Israel would not be the state of the Jewish people. Would not Israel has to stop claiming it's the Jewish state. It has to be a normal state like all other countries. Japan is to the Japanese what Israel is to the Israelis. That is the quickest way towards, towards peace. So my answer to your question about Ben Shapiro and Ariel Gold is they are talking about a conflict, a behavior that has nothing to do with me. If I would be a, a Christian Buddhist that lived in France, you wouldn't play Ben Shapiro's clip for him. And I understand why you're playing it for me. But my answer is that I have as much connection with the issue that they're talking about as I do with China. Mm -hmm. and, and I really feel in my heart that this attitude is the key to starting peace in the Middle East. If Israel is the state of the Jewish people, it's a very big problem for everybody. Yeah. If this was the state of the Israelis, it, it starts the peace process. Rabbi Shapiro, can you tell us is Zionism antithetical to Orthodox Judaism? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Judaism, even Reform Judaism, Judaism is a religion. The definition of a Jew is somebody who the religion claims, who the religion says is obligated to fulfill the mitzvahs, the Torah, the commandments. Zionism says, no, that's nonsense. Judaism is nonsense. Rather, the Jews are and always were a political people wanting to return to their land like all people want to return to their land with a uh, national uh, identity. And Israel is the state of those people. They are, they are, they are diametrically opposed. They are opposed. They are enemies of each other, those two, Judaism and Zionism. Absolutely. And that's what everybody needs to know. Wow. Uh, tell me, we, we hear a lot, you know, of modern Jews, reformed Jews. So modern Jews who say we don't believe in God, Moses, etc. Are they st still considered Jews? Because you'll hear a lot of people who will consider themselves Jews by nationality. But when it comes to God, when it comes to Torah, when it comes to one of these fundamental principles, they, you know, kind of take it like a buffet, like Burger King, have it your way. What do you say to that? Yeah, so if you ask those people what makes them Jews, they'll say it's an ethnicity maybe. And I'll ask them, is Ivanka Trump and the Ethiopian Jews of the same ethnicity, the Yemenite Jews and the Russian Jews? There is nothing that, there, there is no logical uh, definition of Jew except the one that Judaism gives. Uh, these people who want to be considered Jews without religion don't, aren't thinking it through. Are they considered Jews? The answer is according to the religion. If they are obligated to fulfill the mitzvahs, the Torah, the commandments, then they're considered Jews. Judaism, according to uh, the Jewish religion, is a job description. Whoever was given the job by God to fulfill the Torah and that the religion tells us who was given the job, they're considered Jews. So, if somebody is considered Jews, a Jew, according to the religion, they had a Jewish mother or went through a, a Jewish conversion in the proper Jewish way. It's a ritual. It's not nationalization. 
it's not naturalization, it's con religious conversion, then they're considered Jews and obligated to fulfill the Torah. They're, that's true, even if they disagree with that, even if they don't believe it. But if the Torah says you're a Jew, that means you're obligated, and that obligation is what gives you your Jewish identity. So in other words, when I say Jew and they say Jew, it's just a homonym. They may or may not be Jewish, uh, depending upon if the Torah says so. But when I say Jew and they say Jew, it's absolute homonym, you know. Uh, it, it's kind of like by the Christians, you know, they have the evangelical Christians and the Catholics, and they have two completely different ideologies. Zionism is further from Judaism than the evangelicals are from the Catholics, because uh, you know, at least Reform Judaism says uh, Judaism is a religion. It's just a different religion than mine. Uh, Zionism says Judaism isn't even a religion. It's a nationality that had a national religion. The way the Greeks worshipped Zeus, the Jews worshipped Hashem. Yeah, but yeah. it's a it's a completely different definition of what it is to be a Jew. It's the furthest thing you can get. Are, are, aren't there a lot of Zionists who are just atheists? Absolutely. And ben Gurion was an atheist, and uh, uh, even if they're not atheists, they certainly don't believe in our God. Netanyahu is a completely non-observant Jew. Uh, Avigdor Lieberman's anti-observant. Uh, guys like uh, Herzl. Herzl hated Jewish religion. Ben-Gurion said that Orthodox Judaism, meaning Judaism that he said, Judaism that's, that's un, claims that the religion is unchanging, is Nazi ideology. That's what Ben-Gurion said about my religion. Yes, these Zionists, and in fact, that was one of the goals of Zionism. The uh, founding fathers of Zionism, there were those who said that once we establish the Jews as a nationality, religion won't matter. You could be a Greek without worshiping Zeus, you could be a, um, a, 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 what do you call it, a, uh, a, a, from Switzerland or from Norway without worshiping, worshiping Odin. Um, you, could be, you could be an Indian without uh, be, being a Hindu. And you could be a Jew, according to them, without be any religion, because being a Jew has nothing to do with religion. By the way, there's a contradiction in Israeli law about this. Uh, according to Israeli law, an atheist is entitled to the law of return if at least he's born Jewish, okay? But if you convert to Christianity or to another religion, you lose your right to return. Mm -hmm. That's the Jewish, that's Israeli um, Supreme Court ruled that way. There was a Jew who was born Jewish, Brother Daniel. He became a Carmelite monk, and he was no anti-Semite. He saved Jews in the Holocaust by hiding them, helping to hide them. And um, the Israeli Supreme Court said he's not entitled to the law of return because he doesn't he practices another religion. And yet, if you don't practice any religion and you're an atheist, then you are entitled to the law of return, which is nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. But they have no choice because the Zionists were atheists. And to make Christians into Jews, that that, that doesn't fit into the picture of they, what they want Israel to be. Zionism is is a contradictory ideology. They took uh, a cow and they said this cow is a is a car it has feet and not wheels but it's a car they took jewish identity and said it's national not religious but it doesn't make any sense because i mean how do they decide who's born jewish mm -hmm. well if your mother's jewish then you're jewish right but that's religious law if you don't believe in the religion why would you believe in that law so when your typical jew sees such a huge gathering of fifteen thousand. Jews and these are scholars, you know, these are students coming together. Um, you know, what does your typical Jew say? Like somebody who has kind of been led down this other path of Zionism, but he's still, he's a Jew, kind of practicing, kind of not, but then he sees like, you know, uh, what seems to be a contradiction here. What, what's going on here? 15,000, you know, are coming speaking against Zionism. Like what, what, what uh, are they, are they kind of, uh, you know, just, um, you know, shocked? What, what happens? Yes, many of them are shocked, and some Jews are start asking questions. I thank God for the anti-Zionist Jews, because it's because of us that uh, people sometimes wake up. However, that's if they are left to their own devices. Zionism is an incredible propaganda operation, incredible propaganda. I could tell you Zionist propaganda you wouldn't even notice to conflate that conflates Zionism with Judaism. And... Uh, they'll say, oh, those people, they're just a fringe group. That's just uh, less than 2%. And besides, they're misogynistic, they're homophobic, they're primitive, they, their brains are like, you know, that they don't know how to speak English well. They'll try to marginalize and demonize us. Um,
You, 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 speak, you, you speak English quite well. Yeah, I know. They hate me for that, by the way. The, the reason why the Zionists hate me, not because I'm against Zionism, but because I speak English well. If I wouldn't speak English well, it would be much better for them. You know, wow. if I wouldn't dress like I do, if I wouldn't, um, you know, live like, if I wouldn't be a normal American, but just, if I would look and talk and walk like the, the Hasidim, they would be very, very happy. But it bothers them that I'm uh, more modern, I guess you could say, and I'm not bragging about it. It's the way I was brought up. It's the way I am, you know. But um, that's what it is. I'll give you an example, by the way, of the Zionist propaganda. You walk into a, a um, you're, you're in Chicago, right? I, I think. Yes. Into a, uh, I don't know if they have big department stores in Chicago, like Macy's, right? You walk into a big department store in December. So let's say they'll have the Christmas display, right? The, and a Hanukkah display. The Christmas display is always green and red. Those are the color patterns and gold, correct? The Hanukkah display, all Hanukkah decorations are always blue and white. Can anybody tell me what blue and white has to do with Hanukkah? The Christmas display, that's the holly, the berries and the leaves, right? Mm -hmm. But what does blue and white have to do with Hanukkah? The answer is nothing. Hanukkah was the oil, the mac. It has to do with, it's the Israeli flag. Mm -hmm. There is no color pattern for Hanukkah. But the Zionists made this that you should psychologically in your mind connect Zionism with Judaism. So, so that's a, a psychological, subliminal kind of thing. I'll give you another example. Do you know that the streets in Jerusalem... Most of them are named after Jewish historical characters, starting from biblical characters, right? However, you won't find in all of Jerusalem, and I, I checked this out on Google Maps, a street named after Moses or Abraham or Isaac or Jacob. The streets are na begin the names, the naming process with Joshua because in Zionist history, Jewish history begins when the Jews enter the Holy Land, you see. There is one neighborhood that has uh, the Jewish women, the matriarchs, uh, Sarah Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. But uh, other than that, Jewish characters, personalities, Moses. There's no street named after Moses. But you have streets named after Herzl and Jabotinsky. And, of course, Joshua and the prophets and the tribes who, who are... You have the tri names of the tribes, Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda. Now, those are the sons of Jacob. But if you look on the blue plaques on the street corner that explains who the street was named after it doesn't say it was named after the children of jacob rather it is the the tribes of the jews that settled in the holy land mm -hmm. each tribe was from one of the children of jacob but it's named after the tribes zionism is is a, a incredible propaganda machine incredible you know to the jews they say well you have to support israel otherwise all the jews are going to die they're either going to be uh, brought into concentration camps everybody's a hitler hitler lurks around every corner and if not for israel uh, hitler would be back tomorrow in every country everywhere and of course in israel uh, the, the, all the terrorists would just come and destroy all the jews and kill all the jews if you ask them that the jews and muslims lived in peace for for uh, over a thousand years and why is it suddenly now suddenly now that the muslims suddenly these guys allegedly hate jews clearly and and suddenly want to kill them clearly it's zionism that's the problem it's not islam and it's not Mus it's not muslims against jews that's the main thing we have to tell people it's a political thing it's israel it's not the jews they like to conflate it because this way number one they get the support of the evangelicals number two uh, they have a it's very easy to Say, if you're a Palestinian, you're an anti-Semite. The only reason why you don't want a Jewish state there, the only reason why you, you, you allow Israel to do it, because you're an anti-Semite. It's a political conflict between uh, Israel and the Palestinians. It has nothing to do with the Jews being Jews and has nothing to do with Muslims. I mean, how many They're Palestinians right. are uh, not observant Muslims? Uh, Yasser Arafat was secular. You know, uh, that's the propaganda that we need to negate. Mm -hmm. Israel and the Jews decouple them. One has nothing to do with the other. I, I like what you said there. This point, you know, really needs to be stressed that before all of this, Jews and Muslims were living together in peace. I had a rabbi Weiss. I don't know if you know him. I know I him very well. You, you do? do? Yeah, yeah, I had him. He was, uh, he was uh, here in the studio and he was talking about, he was giving some history how actually the Jews 
and the Muslims, how they were getting along and, and they would watch each other's kids. It was like, you know, neighbors watching out for neighbors. It was a uh, very um, different than what you see today. And in fact, it, it's, I'll tell you an amazing story. The, the chief rabbi of the uh, Jewish, the, the Orthodox Jewish people in, in Palestine before Israel was created, his name was Rabbi Sonnenfeld. Um, they, he sent a messenger to the British to tell them that we do not want a Jewish, we do not want to live under the Zionist rule. We'd rather live under Ottoman or, or Arab rule here, we, or British, whatever it is. But we do not want a Zionist state. The, the messenger's name was Jacob Dahan. You can Google him. He was a Dutch guy. D-E-H-A-A-N, Jacob Dahan. You know what happened to him? What happened? The Zionists assassinated him. Wow. It was a political assassin. This is not a secret. They bragged about it. They met the assassin. They dug him up. He was in Japan after the war. And he said, yeah, of course. He, he put Zionism in danger. So we did what we had to do. Zionism, in order to survive, needs to portray Israel as the state of the Jews. The more Jews and the more non-Jews tell the Zionists, no, Israel is the state of the Israelis. Jews may, there may be many Jews who support Israel, and there are many Jews who are Democrats. But there are Jews who are Republicans too. And, and being a Jew and being a Zionist is not the same thing at all. Being a Jew and being Israeli is not the same thing. And the conflict is between the Israelis and the Palestinians, not between the Jews and the Palestinians. It has nothing to do with being Jewish. It's a political conflict that needs a political solution. Just a couple more questions. Uh, we're almost out of time. Actually, we've gone over, but I'm really enjoying talking with you. Uh, tell me how and what was the whole thing that was sold now that brought the Christians who were talking about this rapture, you know much about this, and now that they uh, formed an alliance here, and this is why you have Christians who are also Zionists now. Like when, uh, what's his name, the current president said, I read you, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. So let me tell you a secret. Christian Zionism existed before Jewish Zionism. From the late 1500s, early 1600s, there's a group of Protestants that believe that the Jews, uh, because of their ideology, are going to return to uh, the Holy Lands before their, the second coming of their Messiah. There's a disagreement amongst them. Some say the Jews, when the, their Messiah comes, will convert. Others say they'll just be killed, and others have other opinions. But the, Z the Jewish Zionists got much of their ideology from the Christians, not vice versa. These Christian Zionists existed way before the Jewish ones. Um, Herzl, Theodor Herzl, got his international connections. He was introduced by a, a Christian Zionist named the Reverend William Heck Heckler, H-E-C-H-L-E-R. And he introduced him uh, to the Grand Duke of Biden and uh, many heads of state because he believed that Herzl uh, was a fulfillment of the Christian messianic prophecies. In fact, I got to tell you something. There are many things that people attribute to Jewish Zionists that are really originated with Christian Zionists. For example, the idea that the Jews should take over Israel, the Christian Zionists had way before the Jews. The idea that the Jews should speak Hebrew there, way before the Jews, the Christian Zionists said it. Herzl didn't believe that the Jews should speak Hebrew in a state once he, they create the state because he didn't believe it was possible. And you know the, the um, Zionist slogan that is attributed, by the way, Abu Mazen attributed it to Herzl. That was a mistake. It was said by Israel Zangville uh, that uh, a land without a people for people without a land, Israel Zangville got that from the Christian Zionists mm -hmm. way before any Jew ever said it. And the reason why, one of the reasons why Britain, Britain, Lord Balfour, he was a Christian Zionist. The, the Protestants, uh, look, look how it developed. The Catholics weren't involved in this. This was a, a certain Protestant movement. The Brit British and the Americans, UK and US, they were more of a Protestant Christian country rather than a Catholic Christian country, right? The pilgrims came from Britain. That's why Britain and the US have always been Israel's greatest allies, you know? because of the 25% of U.S. voters are evangelicals, and these are those Christians. But the Christian Zionists have been here way before the, Jew the Jewish Zionists stole a lot of their ideology from the evangelicals. 
uh, in order to garner support from them. Tell me, uh, we see a lot of collaboration happening between Muslims and Jews on this subject. One of them was uh, Rabbi Cohen working with uh, Dr. Lawrence Brown on the Zion deception. Are you, uh, do you know Ra- uh, Rabbi Cohen? And you've met... Uh, Very well. I'm a good friend of his. And I actually purchased the Zionist deception. But I, I, it has Rabbi Cohen's uh, introduction, and that is meaningful to me. Rabbi Cohen is a reliable person. Mm-hmm. Very reliable. However, I don't read fiction. Mm-hmm. I don't have time. I, I just don't I haven't read fiction in like uh, maybe forty years. Yeah, that was uh, that was Dr. Lawrence Brown's way of uh, trying to uh, convey some of what's going on in this type of manner. And but what do you feel about this collaboration that's happening? You know, you have uh, this rabbi with the Muslim, and they're you know collaborating. He's writing the forward here. You, you see a lot of this this happening for the truth to get out for people you know of goodwill coming together to. You know, expose the truth. I think that uh, Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, atheists, everybody should collaborate uh, first to educate themselves on the differences between and the uh, incompatibility between Judaism and Zionism. And the main point is that Israel is the state of the Israelis, not the state of the Jews. It doesn't represent the Jewish people. And then, yes, collaboration uh, for dissemination of truth to create peace in the world. And I must tell you, in my humble opinion, the best thing for the Jews in Israel would be if Israel would become the state of the Israelis. Uh, Israel needs to become a normal country like U.S., Canada, Mexico, whatever. Um, the, all, these, all this conflict, all these problems uh, begin with Israel claiming and desiring and falsely um, uh, arrogating to themselves the title of the nation state of the Jewish people. It makes trouble for me, too. Listen, when Netanyahu says that, um, or Avigdor Lieberman, that Israel is to the uh, Jews what France is to the French, he's not talking about Jews only in Israel. He's talking about to the Jews even, let's say, in France. So what he's saying, this is the official Zionist policy, that the F- France is to the French non-Jews what Israel is to the French Jews. This is anti-Semitic. This is a, a saying that the country of the French non-Jews is France, and the country of the French Jews is Israel. That's a dual loyalty trope. Israel is the new anti- Zionism is the new anti-Semitism. And honestly, what we should be doing, instead of framing the question the way the Zionists do, and this part of the propaganda, because no matter how you answer it, the question itself presupposes something that's not true. At what point does criticism of Israel cross into anti-Semitism? Well, criticism of Israel never crosses into anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is it's like saying, at what point does criticism of, a, of an individual Jew cross in, what, at what point does criticism of an individual Jew cross into anti-Semitism? The answer is when it stops being criticism of an individual Jew and starts being criticism of all the Jews as Jews, which is what anti-Semitism is. Criticizing Israel because it's Israel, as opposed to criticizing all the Jews as Jews, uh, that's not anti-Semitic. What we should be asking instead is at what point does Zionism cross into anti-Semitism? We should be discussing how Zionism is anti-Semitic, how Zionism claims my country is Israel against my will. If I don't like my country, I can move to Mexico, right? I have a, uh, a right by international law to choose my nationality, but no matter where I move and where I go, because I'm born Jewish, Israel says they are my country. And they'll tell you Israel's my country. And if you're an American in Chicago, you look at me and you say, well, Israel, the Jewish state, says America is not Yaakov Shapiro's country. No, I don't want that. That's bad. Zionism is the new anti-Semitism. And we should be asking, we should be writing essays and articles. At what point does Zionism cross into anti-Semitism? Zionism, the new anti-Semitism. Because that's really that, that's really the truth, and yes, we all should collaborate on this. Yeah, Again, yeah. this this is true regardless of no matter whose side or how much somebody believes in one state, two state, three state. None of that matters. The the, the Palestinians just are, are get involved in the got got caught in the crossfire. The problem is, even if there would be no Palestinians, I would still be against Zionism. If the Palestinians would be happy, if there wouldn't be any conflict, I'm still against Zionism. Because Zionism says that I am not a regular American. Israel represents me. 
I don't want to be represented by Israel in its attack on my religion because my religion defines what a Jew is. They say my religion's definition is wrong. And instead, uh, being a Jew is a political thing. I, I am an anti-Zionist because of that. And frankly, I think that that, that that is the root of the conflict. That's the root cause, rather. It's the root cause of the conflict, is the ideology of Zionism. And yes, the behavior, uh, if, if somebody uh, does something wrong, they should be held accountable. No question about it. But the root conflict, the reason for all this behavior is Israel's claim to be the Jewish state. Because we're the Jewish state, therefore we have to ensure a majority of Jews. And because we have to ensure a majority of Jews, we have to do whatever. I say no. Israel is the state of the Israelis. Let it become Herzlstan. That's what I always say they should call themselves. Call yourself Herzlstan. Give up the name Israel. Find a new flag. Don't use a Jewish symbol. That mug and David is a Jewish symbol. Don't use a Jewish symbol. Have a picture of Herzl or something, you know, whatever you want. Just leave, leave the Jews alone. You have nothing to do with the Jews. That is step one in the peace process, if you ask me. And thank you so much, uh, Rabbi. Uh, it was really nice having you on the program. I really recommend people uh, to watch uh, your uh, presentation. On By the way, called Committing High Reason. People I speak can... about a lot of these topics. CommittingHighReason.com. And people can also check out on YouTube, you have this, Has Zionism Hijacked Judaism? It's a really good talk there. And God willing, we can have you back uh, on the Dean Show sometime in the future. Thank you for your time and for share, for share, for sharing these uh, many truths with with us, exposing, you know, um, one that you mentioned that Muslims and Jews lived for over a thousand uh, years in peace. This is very important that Zionism does not represent Judaism. That's another truth, very important. And hopefully, uh, those people with an open mind, open heart, you know, can go ahead and benefit from much of what uh, we've discussed today. Pleasure being here. Thank you very much.